This is Dusty Jones here to talk about chords, sines, and cosines. First of all, I want to talk about chords and chord lengths and the origin of the word chord. Uh, it comes from the Latin corda, which means bowstring, uh, which came actually from the Greek word corde, which means animal intestine. Uh, that sounds kind of gruesome, but that's because uh, bowstrings were made from animal intestines, and a cord, which is a line segment connecting two points on a circle, sort of looks like the string on a bow. Early astronomers were interested in calculating chord lengths, and many helpful formulas they used required they find half the length of a chord for a doubled angle. And so if we've got an angle x here, uh, they would double the angle and then form the chord uh, there. You kind of see the bow uh, string and the bow. And uh, then half of that chord length uh, is what they would use. And that is what we know of as the sine function, or the length of that chord. If the radius of the circle is 1, we would say the length of that half chord is the sine. The word sine uh, comes to us very strangely. Uh, Hindu mathematician Aryabhata first called this half chord uh, yardha. And Arab mathematicians translated this as jiba, uh, which literally meant nothing. And I suspect that might be because they didn't know what the word yardha meant. Now, Arabs wrote without vowels, and so jiba was just written as jb. Later readers saw this jb and thought it stood for jaib. Uh, same consonants and same vowels, but just in a different place. And jaib means an inlet or a bay or a bosom, something kind of um, where like you might imagine water coming into uh, an area. Um, the Latin word for inlet, bay, or bosom was sinus. And uh, Robert of Chester in 1140 uh, wrote this, and then when this came into English, sinus became sine. Uh, you might think of your sinuses, uh, those cavities in your head, uh, which are sort of like inlets or bays. And so that's somehow strangely related to our word sine. Tables of signs were constructed using several different radii, and usually not one. And that's because early on, uh, mathematicians didn't want to deal with small parts. Remember, decimals were not invented, and sexagesimals were very difficult to work with, uh, at least in my opinion. So they used larger radii. Hipparchus in 140 BC used a radius of 60, or in the sexagesimal notation, 1, comma 0. And he said that the chord length for a right angle uh, was nearly 84. Uh, you might look back at an assignment that you've done where you used a radius of 60 millimeters, and the chord length for a right angle should be somewhere close to 84 millimeters. The chord length for a 60 degree angle uh, was 60, or equal to the radius. A Sanskrit manuscript, uh, Surya Siddhanta, uh, which was, came about in the 4th or 5th century, used a strange radius, at least it seems strange, of 3,438 minutes, or 57 degrees and 18 minutes, as the radius of the circle. They might have gotten that as an early approximation to radians. If we take 360 degrees, the full revolution, and multiply it by 60, we get 21,600 minutes and w dividing that by 2 pi, or the circumference of the circle, is nearly this number that they got of 3,438. In Europe, uh, Georg von Purbach in 1460 uh, used a very large radius of 600,000, uh, again, probably trying to avoid small fractional parts. And Reggio Montanus in 1470 used um, a radius of 6 million, and later jumped on the base 10 bandwagon and used 10 million for the radius. Redicus in 1550 became the first European to uh, discard the arc and use trigonometric functions as ratios of sides of right triangles. You might 
say he was the grandfather of the Sokotoa movement uh, that, that you might have learned in high school. And several different formulas were used to derive the signs of smaller angles. It wasn't all uh, measure the angle and then measure the sine length, but there were some formulas that help, helped with that. The cosine uh, gets its name because the cosine is the sine of the complement of the angle. Uh, so the co from complement and then sine. And Edmund Gunther named this in 1620. Uh, if we take a look at this diagram here and say the angles x and y are complementary and we assume the radius is equal to 1, uh, we get this half chord uh, for the angle of 2x, uh, so or the sine of x in other words, is there. And similarly, the half chord for the angle 2y is the sine of y. Since y is the complement of x, the sine of y is the sine of the complement of x. And instead of saying sine of the complement of x, we could just say cosine of x. And since it's talking about the cosine of x, we can actually move it and find another segment that's of the same length as that. If you look, you might see a rectangle uh, hiding in this diagram, and the top side of that rectangle being the sine of y, or cosine of x, and therefore the bottom side of that same rectangle is also the cosine of x.